Welcome back, Your Excellency. So we've already worked with autofill, but in this video lesson, we're going to see how we can leverage flash fill in Excel to automate extracting data from a column of data or combining data from two or more columns into a single cell that's referred to as concatenating data. And we'll see that while flash fill can be a tremendous time saver, it requires a bit of vigilance because Excel isn't always perfect at detecting the patterns we want or in perfectly updating values every time. So let's learn. So let's open a blank workbook in Excel and we'll need some data to work with. I'd like a bunch of names. So I'm going to head over to Google and I'm going to search for list of chief executives. And the first suggestion that comes up is a Wikipedia list of chief executives. Now I'll show you how you can grab this data from the Wikipedia page, but since it's a Wikipedia page, there's a chance that this page has been updated since this video was recorded. Now you can certainly follow along with all of the steps to copy this data and to use the page with the data that you've got today. There is a chance that the data may have changed slightly, but you should be able to work with this data even if the names are different or there's more or less data. You might just have to hunt for names that have similar characteristics when we perform pattern matching. For example, finding a name that's got a junior at the end of it or multiple names instead of just a first name or last name. But also know there is an Excel starter file with the exact data that I've used in this video tutorial. So if you prefer, you can use that. You can find that file in our Excel starter files folder at bit.ly slash Excel dash starter dash files, all lowercase, all one word. And it's this file that you see here named flash fill starter. This is by no means a list of all CEOs or even all of the Fortune 500 CEOs. It's just whichever CEOs Wikipedia editors decide to approve as worthy to add to their list. So once you're on this page, scroll to the very last cell in the last row of this table listing all the chief executive names. My list has just under 200 names and click at the end of the very last cell in the last row. Then while you click, hold down the mouse and drag up and make sure that you've highlighted everything, including all of the cells in the header. So I'm I'm going to make sure that I've dragged through the header name company. That's the very first header. And when this whole web page table of data is highlighted, copy it, return to Excel. And I'm going to select the paste pull down on the home ribbon and choose match destination formatting. Now, since the destination is this Excel worksheet and it has no formatting, we're just going to paste in the data, but not the format. And this is looking good. So I'm going to zoom in at 200% and I only need the first two columns. So I'm going to highlight column C through F and I'm going to delete those and I'll auto fit the first two columns and I want to freeze panes above and to the right of cell C2. So I'm going to click in C2, then I'm going to head to the view ribbon. I'm going to select freeze panes and then I'll save this workbook with the name flash fill. Now it's always a good idea to inspect any newly pasted in data before we use it. So let's scroll to the bottom. And at least at the time that I've copied this data over, for some reason, I've got two extra empty rows before the last rows in this table. So I'm going to delete those empty rows and then I'm going to scroll to the top and I'm going to use Excel's pattern recognition capabilities and flash fill to put the first name of each of these executives into cells in row C. And this is remarkably easy to do. So first to set this up, I'm going to click into cell C1 and I'm going to insert the header first first just the word first in there. And the first executive in my worksheet is Julie Sweet. So she's a CEO of Accenture. It's one of the world's largest technology consulting firms. So in C2, I'm going to enter Julie. And essentially what I've entered here is an example of the end result. So I want Excel to examine all the data in this worksheet and use Julie as the example for retrieving the rest of the data for column C. If you've got a different name in B2, just add the appropriate first name in C2, then press return. And now we know how the fill handle works. If we click on C2's fill handle and we drag below, we just get a repeat of Julie. And that's not what we want, so let's undo. But to get Excel's pattern recognition to kick in, we'll click in C2. Then I'm going to hold down the mouse to start to make the selection. And while I'm holding down the mouse, I'm going to scroll to the very last cell. So for me, that's going to be cell C180. I'll click in that cell. And with all these cells highlighted, I'm going to go back to the home ribbon. And I'm going to find the fill icon in the far right. Now, this looks like a little rectangle or a little window with a downward pointing arrow inside of it. And in the drop down next to the fill icon, I'm going to select flash fill and beautiful Bill Gates. Will you look at that? It looks like the magic of Excel has correctly extracted the first name from the cell at its left and placed it into the appropriate cell in column C. Magnificent. Now, after you performed a flash fill, Excel will offer a pull down rectangle just to the right of its work. That's this little guy right here. And if you click the drop down arrow in this box, you'll see a menu with a bunch of options. Undo the flash fill, accept the suggestion, which accepts the pattern match that Excel came up with. 
Now Excel is still paying attention to any changes we make to the data that Excel just created for us. And if we change any of this data, Excel might tweak its guess as to the pattern that it needs to use for Flashville, and it might update its suggestion based on that change. The pattern recognition is looking good. Most of these cells contain exactly what I wanted. Now we do see that Excel took a first initial and used that as the first name, so GV Prasad is just G. I'm not sure if that's the right choice or if GV is preferred. C. V. Jayakumar shows up as just first name C. I think that's okay. Now for H. Lawrence Culp Jr., I'm going to change the H in C65 to Lawrence. And when you do a change like this, you've got to watch out because Excel could interpret my change as something that merits a more radical change to the underlying pattern. And if it does, it might make significant and unwanted modifications to the fill data that it originally suggested. But when I press return, it doesn't look like any of the other data was impacted. So I think this change is good, but we will see a radical change with my next update. Watch this. Let's keep scrolling, and for J. Clifford Hudson, I'm going to change the J to Clifford, but don't press return yet. Take a look at the data that we have in here, and I'm about to update data, and Excel is going to use this to try to tweak its pattern match, and it's going to guess wrong at the pattern that I want, and we're going to see a pretty significant change. So press return, and wow, that is a pretty radical change. Now, this is not what I want, but fortunately, it's easy to undo. So I'm just going to click in the pull down in this little box that I just demonstrated. So this little box always shows up next to flash fill data before it's been accepted, and I'm going to select undo flash fill revision, and we're back to where we were previously. Now, I like this set of suggestions, even though it's not perfect. So I'm going to select this box again, and I'm going to choose Accept Suggestions. That little box with the drop down goes away, and that indicates that Excel is no longer trying to tweak its suggested flash fill pattern. It's all done. So if I click back in the cell and I replace the J with Clifford and press return, the pattern matching isn't in effect anymore. I'm no longer in pattern matching mode. Excel's not going to try to tweak the pattern matching. And it's just this cell that gets updated. None of the other ones are updated. So this is looking good. A quick scroll down suggests the rest of this data is fine. So I'm going to scroll back to the top and see if I can get Excel to extract the executive's last name. And we're going to use the same technique that we just used with first name. And this will work pretty well, but it's not perfect. So let's try out the same technique. I'll I'll enter the header last in D1, and then I'll put the last name of my first executive in D2. That's sweet. No pun intended. And then I'll click in cell D2 and hold down the shift key and scroll to the last cell in column D. So for me, that's going to be D180. I'll click there. So now I've got my selection. And then I'll head up to the fill icon and I'll select the pull down next to that and select flash fill. And indeed, this is looking pretty sweet because I've got a column full of executive last names. Now we'll check out the data, but in my data, it looks like there's a problem in Dickie's barbecue pit. It looks like Excel thinks the last name of their chief executive, Roland Dickey Jr., is Jr., when it should really be Dickey. So I'm going to click and sell D47, and I'm going to change Jr. to Dickey. And when I press return, oh man, that's a fly in the ribs. Excel radically changed the underlying pattern, and its suggestion for flash fill data is all messed up. Up. This is not what I want, so I'm going to click on the pull down next to the box that accompanies flash fill suggestions. I'm going to select undo flash fill revision, and I'll show you a technique that's worth knowing about. We'll try it here. We're actually going to see it's not going to work, but I want you to know about this because in some circumstances, the technique that we're going to try adding additional examples to the correct pattern and then retrying flash fill will work. So you should know about this, and you should also know that sometimes, despite your best efforts, Excel can't tell what you want. So this technique is to add some more data to the data that Excel is going to look at when it tries to identify a pattern. And if there's more data with different pattern variants in there, sometimes Excel can use this data and it can make more accurate suggestions. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to click in this cell that has Junior in it, and I'm going to hold down the Shift key. And with the Shift key held down, I'm going to scroll to the end of this list, and I'm going to click in the very last cell here, and I'm going to clear out everything in my selection. And I'm going to do that by going up to the Clear icon. Remember, that's this one with a little pink end. It's supposed to look like an eraser. And I'll select Clear All from this pull down. That wipes out all the data from Junior through the end. And where the cell Junior used to be, I'm going to replace that once again with Dicky. But now this is a pattern that Excel can use in flash fill. So previously, we only entered one cell as our starting pattern. But now we've got a bunch of cells with correct values, including this one that ignores Junior and uses the word that's in front of Junior as the last name. So I'll select from D2 through the very last cell that I want to flash fill through. That's D180 for me. And I'll select flash fill again. And let's take a look at our data. Now we want to try to find a name that ends in Junior to see if the update worked properly. I could use Excel's find feature to try to find another Junior, but I see that I've got one right here. Here, H. Lawrence Culp Jr. in D65, the CEO of General Electric, and DRAT. Unfortunately, Flashville did not correctly ignore the Junior and use Culp instead. Oh well. 
Now I wanted to show you this because sometimes adding more examples that reflect different pattern matching will work and it will improve flash fill results, but it's also important to understand that sometimes Excel just isn't smart enough. Like the Rolling Stones say, you can't always get what you want. In fact, Excel's not even showing me a little box to indicate that it's considering any changes to the flash fill suggestions. So I'm just gonna click in the cell that contains Junior and I'm gonna replace that with the correct last name. And if I scroll down, my dad has a problem in row 131. This CEO's name ends in the third, that's three capital letter I's, and Excel thinks that would make a good last name. It won't. So I'm gonna replace that with Johnson, which should be the proper last name. And we've got another junior down here, the CEO of SunTrust Banks. I'll replace that with Rogers. And we've cleaned up our data. Now it wasn't perfect, but it did save us quite a bit of time and we didn't need to write any Excel formulas or use any functions to make this work. We got almost all of the data extracted in a format that we could use, but these first two examples emphasize the importance of double checking to make sure that the data that you get back from Excel matches your expectations. And if it doesn't, you might need to perform a little bit of data cleaning. Now let's try some more examples. Next, let's see if we can extract the first and last initials from the executive's name. So I'll put initials as the header in E1. Then in E2, I'll enter the initials JS for Julie Sweet. And then I'll highlight from E2 all the way through the last cell that I want to use in Flash Fill. Then I'll select flash fill and this looks pretty good although i do see a problem executives with last names that start with mick mc capital m lowercase c and then another capital letter seem to have two mm initials so it looks like excel is building a pattern based on capital letters and let's see by scrolling up here we also see that it uses middle initials so garo h armin is g h a but what if we just wanted to include two initials the first initial and the last initial so let's see if we can train excel to improve so i'm going to click on g h a in garo h armin's name and i'm going to change that to g a and hey that looks pretty good so down here joseph a swedish is just j s and lakshmi niwas mittal is just l m and oh man, Roland Dickey Jr., you're killing me. He's showing up as RJ. So let's see what happens if we change this to RD. And well, that doesn't cause the radical change that we saw in the previous attempt. So that's looking good. In fact, H. Lawrence Culp Jr. is listed as just HC. That's what we want. Very nice. And the CEO of GVK Group has four names, but it's just showing up as GR. And that's exactly what we want. But, oh, Excel is still giving us a hard time with Irish last names that have Mix and O's in them. So McKay, McEwen, and O'Leary. But if I change Dave McKay to just DM, all three of those Irish names change. And as far as I can see, everything else looks good. So this was a much more successful session in training Excel to create the patterns that we need. And again, we didn't write a single function or use a single formula. Very nice. So let's try two more examples. So in the next one, we'll see that Excel can even use the capitalization we'd like. So in F1, I'm gonna write in all caps, last comma space F to indicate that in this column, we should have the last name in all caps followed by a comma, followed by a space, followed by a capital letter for the first name. And then in F2, I'm gonna enter in all caps, sweet comma space J. And then I'll highlight from Sweet J all the way through the last cell that I want to include in my flash fill. I'll select flash fill and this looks spectacular. Exactly what I want. Even Roland Dickey Jr. is behaving himself. Very nice. We can scan through and it looks like we've got no problems at all. Now, when we previously extracted data from first name and last name, we were getting all of our data from column B. Now there's a chance in this step that Excel is actually using data from column C and column D together, taking the last name from D and capitalizing it, and then also taking the first capital initial from C and taking data from two or more cells and combining it into one is known in computing as concatenation. Now, I don't know for sure if Excel is concatenating from C and D here, or if it's still getting all of its data just from column B, my guess is it is concatenating getting the data from C and D and combining them into one cell since the results look so perfect. But either way, now you know what the term concatenation means. And by the way, there's even an Excel function called concat, which will concatenate or combine data across multiple cells into a single value. By the way, if you want to accept the result of a flash fill, you don't need to pull down this little box and select accept suggestions. You can actually just press the escape key. Now this doesn't undo flash fill suggestions, everything remains, but it does stop Excel from trying to update these suggestions further. And that little box that follows around the flash fill suggestions goes away too. Now let's create one more column of data and we'll put some email addresses in here. Now at my university, most students have an email alias that's their first name dot their last name at bc.edu. Well, let's assume that we can get the Gmail account for each executive by constructing an email address the same way, first.last at gmail.com. So in G1, I'm gonna enter Gmail, 
And in G2, I'm going to enter an all lowercase, julie.suite at gmail.com. And when I press return, Excel automatically turns this into a clickable hyperlink, and I don't want that. But if I undo just one time with Command Z on the Mac, Control Z on Windows, the hyperlink goes away, but my data remains. So with G2, Julie Suite's bogus Gmail selected, I'll hold down my mouse, I'll select through the last cell that I want to use for my flash fill, then I'll select flash fill, and we've got just the results that we want all in lowercase looking good so hopefully this video lesson was useful in helping arm you with the skills to further leverage flash fill to modify data and get it in the format you need so more learning in this video we learn to extract data with flash fill improve flash fill with more pattern matching examples recognize and revert incorrect excel pattern matching and we learn to understand concatenation keep building that talent skilled one and stay excellent